And if we, we had a dollar, iCloud. and if we had a dollar for every time we heard technical issues in the last four <laughs> months or so, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'd be rich. Okay, it is recording. All right, we are recording. We've got 24 participants. Does that sound about right? Should we give everyone another couple minutes? Yeah, let's give everybody a couple minutes because I had at least 40. Okay, okay, perfect. And just to check, you guys can see it's a, um, it's a black screen and it says Freedom Boat Club. Yes. Yep. Hi, Rosemary. Hello. Perfect. How are you? <laughs> hey, Jill. Hello. Uh, I barely made it. We're, we still don't have electricity. So I'm oh. doing this by phone. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Hi, Kathy. Oh, Hamlin. Hi. How are you? Good, thanks. Ooh, Hi, lots everyone. of new faces. Hi, Hi, everyone. Hey, Kathy. Hey, other Kathy. <laughs> I'll go Hi, back to you, Kathy. Oh, this is like cool, guys. <sighs> wow, this is great. Hi, Rob Sweeney. Are you hiding? He's muted. Okay, yeah, and his video's not on. Leanne, you've got an echo behind you. Well, what's going to happen is I'm going to mute myself as soon. What we're all going to do, ladies and gentlemen, as soon as Amanda starts, everybody's going to mute themselves. And you know that um, on the bottom of your screen, if you click on the chat bubble. I can mute them all. I can mute okay. at once. Okay. So we can, um, and then they can unmute individually if they want to. Well, what I thought at the end for question and answer, everybody can unmute themselves. But does everybody see the, um, the chat box? Yes. On the bottom. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. If yes. you have a question during the presentation, <clears throat> we're going to be monitoring that. So if you want to answer, ask a question. Oh, let me mute myself because that dog's going to bark as soon as those electric guys are outside. Okay. <laughs> All right. So look, we're doing great. We've got 29 participants. Wow. One more is coming. How do, how do I um, get rid of the opening screen here? It says Freedom Boat Club, how to use Garmin. No, because Amanda's going to shift that. Oh. That's the PowerPoint. Oh, oh the, I got you. Hi, hey, Amanda. how we're are like, you? At? We are like moving and shaking here. Yeah. Well, that shows you the great degree of need. <laughs> I left, I, left an, I left a fun birthday party to make sure that I got to this. This is going to be worth it. I'm I telling you. Telling you now. Did you have a lot of people asking to do this? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Good. Um, okay, let's see. Um, let's give people like one more minute. Yep, I've got 7.05. Yeah, we got 30 people on, and um, I guess what will happen is they'll just be able to get on. Um, I just clicked. It. Here's the email right here. Independently. Okay. I want to send this to you so you can just click on it and not go through all that other stuff. Sign somebody as a co-host, and then if you're using a waiting room, that co-host can let them in. Okay. Okay. Let's see if we can... Go to my mail. That way send Do that. Yeah. Participants. Yeah. Yeah. Come to me. I'm not sure if you uh -huh. use a waiting room or if we just hadn't started the event. We um, haven't started yet, but we're. No, no, I, I understand that, but opened the Zoom event. Um, if you're not using a waiting room, it's not a problem. They'll just be able to get straight in. But. So I'm sending this. Hello. 
Yes. Hi, Norman. How are you? Okay, let me put the. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is at the end of the recording, uh, at the end of the presentation, um, we're going to record it mm. and then we're going to send the link to everybody. This is a good idea. Okay. Okay. Thanks for calling, Norman. All right. Have a great night. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. All right, guys. What do you think? We get started. Let's go. Okay. Um, it is with great anticipation that I introduce Amanda Funk. Amanda is with Garmin, and she's going to explain to us how to use Garmin to make life on the water a whole lot more enjoyable. There you go. Now, um, and to be able to use the Garmin to ensure that you know what you're doing at any time that you're on the water. Um, Amanda is going to mute everybody during the presentation, but if you have a question, please go to the chat feature on the bottom, click it, and then where it says type message here, if you want to type your question in, and we'll, I'll be watching that, and then we will be um, asking those questions in the content of the program. And then at the end, Amanda promised to have some question and answer. And at that point, then you can unmute yourself or Amanda will unmute everybody and ask the question. I know how to make a gallery so you can see everybody. It sounds good. Okay. All right. Go ahead and um, mute everyone leanne if you want to unmute yourself that way you can kind of monitor the chat box okay and i will then, um you can jump in on that um okay yes all right perfect we have everyone muted can you just tell me what you guys see on your screen or leanne what do you see on the screen I see the first piece of your PowerPoint presentation, Freedom Boat okay. Club, how to use the Garmin. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so let's see if I can figure out how to change. There we there go. There you go. Okay, so on our agenda today, we are going to kind of keep this a, a an elementary version because I could go on for eight hours on how to use these machines. <laughs> So we're going to kind of take a, a first start on these. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through an introduction. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Then it sounded like from working with Leanne, most of the boats that you guys are going to be on will have, will be using the echo map models. So that's what we're really, really going to focus today on. And we can jump in a little bit deeper at another time if we wanted to. So we're gonna look at some basic functions on the echo map models. We're gonna look at some chart functions. We're going to show you how to read the depth and find the depth so you make sure that you're not going to run aground. Um, finding tides, because that's another huge factor in making sure that you stay safe and stay uh, focused on uh, your safe boating. We have a Garmin webinar series. We launch a webinar um, every the first Thursday of every month. So what we can do there is if you are interested in that, we cover a wide variety of topics. Some may be very helpful to you. Some may not be helpful to you. So if you are interested in that, I've got notes on here on how we can uh, sign you up for the email list on how to get into the Garmin webinars. Okay, before we go, we've got one question. Um, webinars, yep. are they free? They are absolutely free. And then a week or so after they are launched, they are put up on our YouTube page. So I do have a link on that too. Um, Great. And what I can do is the link to our YouTube page, I will send that to Leanne. And that way, when she sends out the link for this recording, she can send out the link to the webinar so you guys can look at our previous webinars as well. 
And then as promised, we can have an open Q&A. Okay. There we go. Okay, so about myself to introduce myself a little bit. Um, hopefully you'll find me qualified to give you some information. Um, my name is Amanda. I was born and raised in Annapolis, so on the Chesapeake Bay. I was born in July and I was on the boat by the end of the summer. Wow. <laughs> and there ever since. Um, I have my own 20 foot Rabalo center console that I take out probably four to five times a week, uh, whether it's by myself or my favorite companion is my dog, Crew. He is a golden retriever and he absolutely loves the water. I like to fish. I am an avid fisherman. I like to fish the bay, not as much as I enjoy going offshore. Um, I have fished in Guatemala, which is where this picture is from, this sailfish here. Um, Guatemala, uh, Cabo, Mexico. I've gone offshore in Hatteras, Wachaprig, Ocean City, Maryland. So I've been offshore a lot. My, one of my lifetime goals is to fish and cruise the world. Mm. I want to see all the, all the different kind of fish and you know, I just enjoy spending my time out on the water. You just see some incredible things while you're out there from, from dolphins to, uh, I saw in, on this particular day when I caught this fish, I was bringing in a sailfish and on the horizon saw one of those huge manta rays just launching out of the water. And you know, the things you see out on the water are just incredible. So I share a passion for it. Um, Garmin helps that passion. It helps keep me safe on the water uh, with a number of different pieces of equipment. I've spent two and a half years with Garmin and I've been in the marine industry almost 20 years ever since I started working. I've been in the marine industry. I started at Boaters World, if anybody remembers those stores. I started working Boaters World as a cashier, worked my way up to assistant manager, and then I managed a few stores as well. After that, I went into, had a very, very small, miserable time in the banking industry before I went back into boating, the boating industry. Uh, I worked for Gemini Catamarans, if anyone has seen a Gemini Catamaran. So I was on the manufacturing side of boats. Then I went back to West Marine, the retail, just I enjoyed the customers and that's what led me into Garmin and I've been with Garmin for two and a half years. So that is enough about me. And let's see if we can teach you something. <clears throat> okay, so we have four different EchoMap models. I wanna show you the four different models because these are the four models that you're gonna see on the various boats that you're on. So we start down here on the bottom left. We have the EchoMap 44. We have the 54, 64, and 74. The main difference and the only difference in what we're going to talk about today and in the capacity that you guys will be using these machines is the screen size. That's the only difference. Oh. Things that we talk about today are going to apply across that range of all four units. Um, the, and obviously the larger the boat you go on, the larger the screen, because you have the more dash space and things like that. You do have one boat available to you that has our GPS map series on it. The things that we talk about today, other than your button presses, are gonna be exactly the same. You just have to use a little bit different button presses to get to where we'll talk about on this one. Um, but that's only available on one of the boat options for you. So everything we talk about today will apply to all four of these models. Okay, so here's the keypads. So I will tell you, disregard the numbers. I had to take this from, uh, this picture from our owner's manual and I didn't like their descriptions, so I made my own. So just disregard the numbers and we're gonna go through the keypads. 
So first you have the power button. And if we, if I can go back one slide real quick. Okay, so if you notice the keypad on these four models, the smaller model has the keypad on the bottom. And then everything else, your keypad is on the right hand side. That's what you see here. So on the right, the keypad on the right, that's the smaller model, the four inch. And everything else will have the keypad on the left. That's the five, the six, and the seven inch. Same buttons, just a different configuration due to the size of the screen. All right, so we have the power button. That's actually the number one on both of these. So you have the power button on the bottom left on the four inch and the top right on all of the others. This serves two functions. One, obviously power, turn it on and off. But this also gives you a very, very quick way to get to your, um, your backlight, the backlight on your screen. So if you tap that button, you press it quickly, it will give you your backlight options. You can then change it to night mode or day mode or an automatic. Automatic is exactly as it sounds. It will switch between day and night mode automatically. You also have the option to adjust the screen, the backlight, manually. So you can take it as bright as you want or as low as you want at any time during the day. So that's what that power button does there. Then you have on the left, right below the power button, you have the plus and minus. On the screen, on the picture on the right, the smaller screen, you have it on the top left, the plus and minus, that's your zoom in and out. Very easy zoom in and out. And then you have your arrows, your cursors. Your cursors, I'm just gonna check the waiting room really quick, okay? Your cursors will allow you to do a number of things. As you go into your menus, since these are button only units, this is what will allow you to navigate through your menu options. When you are in a chart screen, the cursor is what will allow you to do what we call panning, which means if you're, and I'll show you, we're gonna talk about that a little bit later also, but panning allows you to search the chart for anything else and go away from where your little boat icon is located. Select is just as it says, it allows you to make a selection. So when you are in your chart menu and you highlight the option that you want, you would just hit select. Back again, just as you would suspect, it brings you to the previous page, the previous screen. Menu. Menu is self-explanatory self -explanatory as well. That brings you to the menu. One unique thing about the garments that helps us stand out from all of our other competitors is that when you hit the menu button, you get the menu for the screen that you're in. So if you're in your chart screen and you hit menu, you're gonna get your, excuse me, your chart options. If you're in the sonar screen and you hit menu, you're gonna get your sonar options. So that's what makes Garmin really, really easy to use. There are some competitors out there where no matter what screen you're in, when you hit menu, you get the same menu every time and you have to navigate through many different pages to find what you're looking for. And that's not the case here. So we have our menu button and the menu will pop into whatever screen that you are in. It will give you that one there. Um, next, we have the home button and we're gonna talk about the home screen in a moment. The home button, no matter where you are within the Garmin units, no matter what screen you're in, how deep embedded in the menu you get, if you hit home, it's gonna take you home. And that's where you can just kind of, if you get lost in the menus, you can hit home and start over. And again, we're gonna talk about the home screen in a little bit more depth and detail. Then you have the orange mark button. So this will mark a waypoint at your current location. A waypoint is a point of interest. So for example, if you are out cruising and you come across a sandbar and it gets really shallow and you want to mark that spot, whether you think 
anybody else should see that spot or not, you want to mark that spot, you hit mark and you can name it sandbar. The waypoints are points of interest. This is probably not something you're going to use a lot because from how I understand that Freedom Boat Club works is that you're not on the same boat every single time and uh, person A may jump on the boat this weekend, person B may jump on it this, the next weekend, and person C may jump on it another weekend. So your waypoints and your points of interest are not always going to be exactly the same. So this is, this is something that you probably aren't going to use a whole lot, but I just wanted to address it because it is on the machines. Okay. Leanne, how are we doing on questions? Uh, right now, we're, they're just wrapped attention on what you're telling them. No <laughs> questions as of right now. All right, good. So this is the home screen. Oh, cool. Power on your machine, you're going to get the home screen. It doesn't matter which of the four units you're in, you're going to get the home screen. I will mention when I, all of the screenshots that you're gonna see in the presentation here were done on the six inch screen. The five inch, the six inch, and the seven inch are going to look very similar. The only difference that the four inch that you will see is that all of these little icons are going to be in a line. They're gonna be in a list form because of the size of the screen it's going to be in a list form rather than having all the icons nice and wide. The other thing I want to mention while we are talking about the home screen is you can see all of these, for example, you have media, you have autopilot, you have gauges. These are only going to show up if those features are networked onto these boats. And from my understanding, they are not. So the home screen will only give you options for the features that you have on that particular boat. I'll mention again, the screenshots that I took, again, they were on the six inch screen and it is also in demo mode. So every feature imaginable is listed on this. So that's why you see a number of different icons there. Um, but again, you will most likely only see the chart icon here, so frequently used, and combos. And depending on the year of the unit, you may or may not see active captain. So those will probably be the only four that you will see. Starting from there, we are going to go into the chart menu. So you see the chart menu, I'll go back here a little bit, the chart icon is highlighted. And then you would just hit that select button and you get into your chart menu. Most likely, and again, from my understanding of how the boat club works, you guys are, are just out to have a lot of fun, um, explore around, take a trip, things like that. You're not necessarily into, big fishing and sport fishing and things like that. If I'm wrong, we can address that in a different topic. Yeah, but Amanda, one of the questions that has now come in, and I find this, this is a really great um, question for, from Gary. How do we get rid of the sun glare when looking at the screen? Good question. The answer is not very easily. So, as we have different series of chart plotters, we change our screens. This is, um, this is reflected in cost of the units, the different series that they're in. One thing you may want to try, which I find very often, is a lot of times the screens are stuck in night mode or the backlight is down. So one thing, if you are having a hard time seeing the screen, hit that power button once and see if you can adjust the backlight. And that may make a difference to you as well. Good question. Yeah. 
Okay, now I'm not sure if somebody's messing with me here, but man overboard mark may be of interest. Okay, okay. So if you hold, if you are cruising and you hit that, if you press and hold that mark button, that will give you a man overboard mark. So if you press it once, you're gonna mark a waypoint, a point of interest. If you press and hold, it will mark a man overboard and will give you an option to navigate to that point. And when you navigate to that point, it will just give you a nice bright pink magenta line that you would just follow to get back to that area. I thought they were messing with me. <laughs> <laughs> Good questions. Good questions. Okay, so from the home screen to get here, we're looking at the uh, photo on the left hand side there. When we hit select on the chart icon, this is what popped up. So you have embedded three chart options. The one you will use the most and the one we're going to talk about today is going to be the navigation chart. The navigation chart is going to give you and you can do a quick glance at this uh, screenshots on the right hand side. That's what's going to give you the charts. That's what's going to give you your navigation aids and everything you need to navigate through the waterways. The fishing chart, I'll give you a brief description, is just as it sounds, but it gives you contour lines so you can see more of your drops, drop offs, your holes, your peaks, your valleys that are going on on the bottom of the water. Your perspective 3D gives you a 3D view of what's ahead of you. So it kind of puts you on the same plane that you are looking at as you are looking over the dash of the boat. It can get very confusing and it's not very easy to navigate with. So we're going to, I'm going to encourage you to stay on the navigation chart. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll put it that way. Okay. So over here, So over here, I have a couple bullet points. On your chart, you have boat position. So looking over here on the two screenshots on the right, you see the boat icon. Here's one here and here's one here. I have it highlighted here, north up. This is what makes it very easy for me, is that I always know north is up. And it should be north up by default. You can, and some people, and it's complete personal preference, change that to course up. So whether I'm heading south, if I'm heading south and I'm going down, if you have course up on your screen, you're gonna see the boat going up. And to me, that's just a little bit confusing. I like, you know, because in my mind, when I'm looking at a chart, north, south, east, and west, north is up. So I like my chart screen to be on north up. And again, that should be the default setting. So no matter which way you're heading, north, south, east, or west, which direction you're heading, your boat on your screen is always going to be north up. So if you're heading east, your boat is going to be going this way on your screen. If that makes sense. Okay. So on here, we also have channel markers. So looking at both of these, you can see a green marker here and a red marker here, and you can see your channel markers here. These are, I'll just kind of give you a little on these two screenshots here. These are the same screenshots. One is just zoomed in, one is just zoomed out. And I did okay. want to show you a little bit more of the detail that you'll see as you zoom in and out. Amanda, getting back to the course up. Yeah. Um, uh, it says, okay, so it says, but depends on who had the boat last. Yes. How do you set the course up option and north up that is? Now, it, you said that it's the default is mm -hmm. set, but north up. Mm hmm But yes, you are correct. So if... Person A had the boat the weekend before you and you come in as per person B and they changed it to course up. What you would do in that instance 
is you would just hit your menu button while you're in your chart. So when your chart is pulled up on the screen, you will hit your menu button and it is under orientation. So if you see orientation, it may be display and then orientation, but you're looking for orientation and that will give you your option of north up and course up. But this also shows good manners too. If you guys go in there and you start changing this stuff, when you get off the boat, I would reset everything. And, and Amanda's gonna get more into, into this later on as we, we go. But I just think that that's just good manners. Yep. Okay, so depth. We're gonna talk about overlays a little bit later as well. But depth, I know depth is a concern for a lot of people. So if you look on both of these charts, you see all these little teeny tiny numbers, 21, 22, 24, 41, 17. These are all depths. So if you look at the top over here, where my cursor, do you guys see my cursor moving around? Yes. Okay, good. So I have a 19, and then as we get into the lighter blue, we have 10 seven, and then the darker blue should be very shallow. So that's a little bit on how to read those, those uh, col different colors there. Your white is good deep water, then you get into average depth water and then low depth water in the dark blue. So that's what those little numbers are. And those depths are taken on mean low tide. So that means your average low tide so that way, if you are in low tide, you're safe. If you have an extraordinary low tide, you may want to watch out a little bit. Okay, also in the lower um, left corner. And when it yep. says depth there, I was under the misunderstanding. Uh, I thought that was kind of like the center of the boat, but it's not. That is where your transducer is. And where is that in all the boats? Most likely in all of your boats, it's on the transom. It's on the back of the boat. So you've already went over it. So you yeah. went over it. Yeah, yeah. But that gives you an idea. You know, if you start seeing depth here, and I'm going to address that as an overlay as well. If you see depth here and you get down into, you know, based on the boats, on the list of boats that you sent me, Leanne. Mm-hmm. I would probably start looking for another path around four feet to stay safe. You know, a lot of the boats that you have, you know, you could probably get away with two and a half, you know, your smaller, smaller boats, you could probably get away with two and a half, three feet. Um, I wouldn't go as general practice. And even I do this on my own boat. And I've had my boat for more than five seasons and I know the draft of the boat very well. I try and stay in five feet more, four or five feet. After that, I'm, I'm getting a little bit nervous and I'm raising the engine, raising the outdrive, things like that. Okay. Uh, we okay. have a question that on the, um, the charts on the Garmin, how often are they updated? Good question. And the answer is every couple years, but it takes someone to actually do an up, physically do an update on the machine. So that would fall under the maintenance plan on the machines. Or when, are you, when you do a maintenance on the boat. Yep, Okay. Good question. Okay, overlays really quick. Um, we are at 735, so I just want to make sure that we can get into everything. Okay. Overlays, these four pieces of information in the corner, these are called overlays. So your depth right here, this is on an overlay. You can turn these on and off. So if you get onto a boat and you don't see those, you may want to turn them on. Uh, and I think I have a screenshot of it off. So we're gonna get into those a little bit more. Here we go, the next slide, overlays on. So top okay. left and right here, you can see a difference. Overlay off, overlay on, or I should say hidden and shown. So your overlays will give you your speed, your heading, 
and I can't see the bottom corner, but I believe that it, those are your coordinates. And then your depth. Right here on the bottom is how you would turn those off and on. So when you are in your chart, you will hit menu. And this is the menu that pops up. So then you would go into edit overlays, overlay numbers, your options are hide and show. So if you don't see your overlays, if your screen, your chart screen looks like the one on the left and you want your depth where you can see it nice and easy, you'll have to go into your menu, edit overlays and show. And then it will pop up on your four screens. Um, one note, I want to kind of go back to the question, whoever asked the question on how to change the orientation, north up and course up. This navigate, this chart menu over here, the navigation chart menu, this is what pops up when you hit menu. You would go into chart setup and then orientation should be in there and you can change north up and course up. Okay. I kind of wanted to touch on that real quick since we have a screenshot. Okay, overlays on, zoom and pan. So as you can tell on this screen here, we do not have overlays. No overlays, no information in the four corners. All right, so we have, there we go, zoom in and out. So you can zoom in and out and you can move your cursors. When you start using your cursors and you start moving your cursor, it gives you this yellow circle with this, the X in the middle. This allows you to move wherever you want to go and that is called panning. So you can pan the screen, you can zoom out. So what I like to do, especially if I'm going into a waterway that I don't know, I will zoom out and I'll move ahead of the boat icon. And that way I can see what's coming up in front of me. You can use it to move around the chart. Hover over an item for identification. So you can see here I'm hovered over the red marker. This is the red number eight. You're, it blinks for two and a half seconds, et cetera, et cetera. You are, from where we are here, you can look at this box at the top this is your cursor position. So what this is telling me, this is giving me the coordinates of my cursor here, this yellow X. This is telling me how far away it is. It's 1.07 miles away. And it's telling me what, it is telling me what um, heading I need to be on to get to that cursor. So that is panning and zooming. Okay, tracks. I know I'm running through this pretty quickly. So if we have questions at the end, we can, we can get those too. So tracks, I want to talk about these um, for a couple reasons. One, because if you see them on the screen, you may not know what they are. Or two, they're really good to have on. So the picture on the right hand side, and I will Apologize for the quality of the picture. I did steal that from Google Images because I couldn't find one. But you see your boat icon, your boat icon, and you have this breadcrumb trail behind it. These are your tracks. And what they are is they are a recording of the path, sorry, path, not bath, of your boat, the breadcrumb trail. It is currently being recorded as the active track. So what this does essentially is it shows you exactly where you have been. So for if you are trying to get back, you can follow the exact same path back to the dock. A good practice may be to clear your active tracks so that when you get on the boat, you have a fresh screen and you're not looking at anybody else's tracks and it's not getting confusing. Another good practice is to just make sure tracks are on. So there is a setting here where you can turn tracks off and you're not going to get the breadcrumb trail. 
So down here on the bottom left, I have, and this is in waypoints and tracks. So again, from your chart screen, you're gonna hit menu and you're gonna go into your waypoints and tracks. This here, you say tracks display, you see the green light, tracks are on. If this is not green, then you are not going to display tracks. So tracks are on. I have this active tracks option highlighted because if you want to go in and clear someone else's tracks, if you get on the boat on a Saturday morning and you have someone else's tracks from the previous weekend and they're all over the place, you can clear the active tracks. So this is where you will go to clear the active tracks right here. So good practice, you wanna make sure tracks are on and you may wanna clear all the active tracks so that you're only seeing your own and you don't get confused. And that will help you get back to where you've, show you where you've been and help you get back to the dock. Okay, we have one from, um, the other good practice is that you are in, if you are in unfamiliar water, leave the old tracks on the screen so you can follow where it is likely safe to go. That's one of the benefits of leaving that on if you know, you're know you unsure. Yes, however, I would like to highlight what you said there is that it is likely the better way to go. Now, with shoaling along the Atlantic, that's not always the case. For example, I was coming out of the Wachaprig Inlet and if anyone has ever been out of the Wachaprig Inlet in Virginia, it changes by the hour. So I was going out and I had been out the weekend before and we followed our exact same track that we took the weekend before and we ran aground because the shoaling changes all of the time. All the time with the wind, the tide, the currents, the shoaling changes. So yes, you can see where everyone has gone, yeah. but like Leanne said, it's likely the better route. It's not guaranteed. Can we quickly go back over how to clear the track? Yes. We're right here. Yes. So you will go into from your chart screen, you will hit menu. And let me go up one here. Okay. So when you're in your chart screen and you hit menu down here on the bottom left, this is what pops up. So then you're going to go into waypoints and tracks. And then you're going to get this menu and you'll hit active track and then it will give you an option to clear tracks. Great, great. Okay. Reading depth, we'll kind of go over this again because it's an important piece. Again, you have all of these little tiny blue numbers, 21, 30, 24, 11. Then you got this little four foot right here. That's your depth. Again, mean low tide. Um, you've got white is deep water, good water. Then you have blue, you're getting a little bit shallower. Then you've got dark blue, you're really shallow there. So best advice, stay out of the dark blue. You also have depth here down on the bottom. Reading depth in your sonar screen. So you have a sonar screen on here. So I'm gonna flip back just to the beginning here. So you see your chart option, your chart icon and your sonar icon. If you scroll over and you hit select on your sonar icon, this is what you're gonna get. So I will show you how to read this screen here. So at the very top, you have your depth. On this particular demo, we're at 409 feet. Um, right below that, you have your uh, water temperature. You've got your speed, 10.1 miles an hour. And you have your battery voltage and you have your time of day. You also see the scale on the right-hand side. That's depth also. So you see the solid red line, that's your bottom. And you're right past 400 feet. So you're right about 409 feet. 
So that's how you read it on the sonar screen. So some people like to see what's going on on the bottom. For example, we've got a little cluster of fish here. Looks like we've got some bait fish up here. Looks like we have a little structure and some fish swimming around it over here. So you can do a split screen and that's what this is over here on the right hand side. So on this one, you've got your chart screen here and you've got your sonar screen here. And then you have depth up top. So you can do a split screen. I did not get into how to do that on this because I wanted to keep it um, pretty, pretty simple on here. Um, if that's something we want to do, we can talk about another webinar on that one. But that's found in combos if anyone wants to explore the combos. Okay. Uh, somebody asked what layers are. If you could just quickly go over that. They're asking like, what are the layers? Layers. Okay, so good question. Um, you probably won't need to go into them, but layers are, you have different layers to add different amounts of information to your charts. Um, you can go into your chart layers and add different functionalities. Um, I'm trying to give you an example that you would find on the echo maps. Um, um, for example, and this is going to get pretty technical and deep here, you have depth range setting. That's going to be found in layers. So what that means is you could, you could do set depth ranges as different colors. So from zero feet to five feet, you can turn that red on your chart. From five feet to 10 feet, you can turn that yellow on your chart. And from 10 feet to 25 feet, you can turn that light blue on your chart to give you a visual representation. To do something like that, you would go into your layers menu. Yep, good question. Okay. But keep in mind, if you if you're on the boat one weekend and you go in and you change it, unless you change it back, that's what the next person is going to see. So it may or may not be, um, you know, if, it, if that's how, if that's what's going to help you, by all means, go ahead and do what's easiest for you to navigate through. But you may want to take an extra minute to just change it back for the next person because it could be confusing for them. Okay. Okay. Finding the tide. Finding tides. So on your home screen, you'll notice on the left-hand side, we've got the home screen pulled back up. On the home screen, we have down on the bottom three options. You have navigation info, settings, and customize. So under navigation information, pull that up. You will get to the screen, the menu that we have over there on the right-hand side. Just a side note really quick, because we are here, you see tracks at the top right. That's another way to get into that track menu. It just leads you back to the same thing that we talked about before, the same options there. So I have highlighted tides and currents. This is where you will find your tide information. When you select tides and currents, you will get a page that looks like this. Again, keep in mind, this is simulated data. So we have So can you see my cursor? We have some crosshairs right here. Yeah. So you can use the cursor on your machine to move those crosshairs. And what it will do is it will move down the line. So your blue line is your tide. Where my cursor is right now, down here on the bottom, just before the four, that's low tide. Come back up you're coming up, this is high tide. So we have where the crosshairs are right here. We are just about at high tide. Down on the bottom, that gives you the time of day. So we know according to this, we have high tide is right about 8.30 p.m. 
Okay. What you can also do here, you can choose your station where you want to see your tide station. You can go to the next day and the next day. So for example, if you are using the boat all weekend long, the night when you're getting ready to leave one day, you can check the tides for the next day. And that will tell you the tides for the next day. So you can kind of make a plan on when to go out, when you might want to be back so you avoid low tide, things like that. Okay. All right. Those are tides. How are we doing on time? Seven. Uh, we're good. Um, here's a question. Okay. If we're going from Lewis to Cape May, how can we chart our path? Okay, I'm going to give you an easy answer uh, because we could spend an hour talking about that itself. Um, that is going to be in routes. So you see routes right here? Ah. You can, on your chart menu, let me run back here. So for example, if I have my cursor written on, highlighted on this marker, and that's where I wanted to go, I would hit, I would then hit select and it will ask, give me a series of options. I think it will, without looking at a screen, I think it will ask me if I want to make a waypoint. It will ask me if I want to go to or I want to route to. If you put in route to, that's going to draw you a magenta line from your boat icon to that point where you were. So the short answer is cool. you could just use your cursor and highlight where you want to go and just route to. Now, the reason that gets a little bit difficult is because what it's going to do is it's going to draw a straight line. It's going to draw the most direct path to that point. So for example, if we look at the top right uh, chart screen up here, we have our boat icon. If we wanted to go over here, it would draw us a straight line across this land, this land mass. Okay. So we would then have to do, and I'm gonna talk through this because if you get on there and you play with it, you'll see these options, but we don't have time to go to in depth. That might be a nice next um, presentation. Yeah, and sure. I think that's, absolutely. So it's doable. Yep. It's yeah. It's doable. Let's, so what let's, you would do, what you would do is you would just add turns. And then at that point, you would take the, highlight the pink line and you would move it around the point. So you have to do a little bit of work for it, uh, but you can do it. It is very doable. Um, and yes, that would probably make for a good, at least half a topic for the next one. Great, I love that. Yep. Um, also, now, while keep, we're here. Uh, one uh, second, let ahead. me just talk one more point on that one. Keep in mind when you create a route and you save it, it's going to stay in there. So if you want to name it and you would say Lewis to Cape May, you know, someone else could potentially use that route I mean, hopefully you wouldn't be uh, s trying to sabotage the next person and run them aground, but <laughs> you'd have to use your, you know, if you're the next person and you choose to use someone else's route, you're going to have to take responsibility for that. But uh, that route will be saved in that machine. So I just wanted to mention that. Okay. Um, also, there's a question is, is there a clear all function that you can hit at the end of your day? We can go into that. There is a, um, and I will have to get back to Leanne on the exact button presses, but you can restore the machine to factory defaults, meaning that's going to erase everything. It's going to erase your tracks. It's going to erase your waypoints. It's going to erase your routes and anything that you change within the machine. And it will set it back to its factory defaults just as if you opened it brand new out of the box. So yes, and I can um, get that process back to Leanne so she can disperse that. Yep. Good question. 
All right. Do you have anything further for us today? Looks the like only, the only thing I have left is I did want to mention the webinar series. Uh, yes. We do have one on coming up on Thursday tomorrow. Uh, this is the link for it. I will send that to Leanne so she can disperse that as well. And that is going to go over the top 10 did you know features. It's going to be on the GPS map series and everything we talked about today was on the echo map series. So it may be beneficial, just you might, some features may or may not be available and your button presses may be a little bit different. But you can, if you go on YouTube and you search Garmin Marine webinars, you can see all of our past webinars. If you would like to get onto our email list for our webinars, um, here's another tips and tricks. This is one that we did two years ago up at the top here. Um, if you would like to get on the email list for our webinars, email Leanne and Leanne, I'm gonna let you kind of compile a list and then I'll send that to our marketing department. Great. Um, also, I was taking a look, I got on YouTube. Yep. And I put in Garmin. Okay. And there are so many Garmin videos on yes. there. Yes. Is there a quick and easy way to go to the Marine, um, your, your videos? Right here, down here on the bottom. Search Garmin Marine Web. Ah. Yay. Don't type Garmin, you're going to get way too much stuff. Yeah. We do aviation webinars, we do our fitness webinars, outdoor webinars, all that kind of stuff. I noticed. <laughs> yep. Great. We've got, Can you leave that um, screen back up during the question and answer? Because I know people are going to want to, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sure. So we've got a couple minutes left. Um, I know this has been a long hour and I've talked plenty. So please ask some questions. Um, if you have questions, if you come up with something later after the webinar, email Leanne and she's going to compile the list of questions and get them to me. Also, if you want to go into depth on anything that Amanda has presented tonight, um, she has graciously um, agreed to do um, some additional webinars for us. Um, also, what this is going to kind of dovetail into um, the Sea Sisters or as divas wanted to get into the Navionics uh, app. Now, I don't know how much you, of you guys know that Navionics is a Garmin company. So we will, um, in the future, have um, Amanda spearhead a, a Navionics uh, tutorial for us. So if you guys want to go, you know, any other presentations that you want to have um, discussed, we can, we can do that. Looks like we've got a question from Pat. Yeah. Oh. Hi, um, thank you. Uh, two questions. Um, Leanne, would it be possible for the docking staff of Freedom Boat Club to clear the, um, um, the previous information prior to a boat going out? Uh, let me jump in here. Um, it's Ooh, Bev. Perfect. So we will, um, we will be discussing that and decide whether that is um, a, a useful thing for the staff to be doing. Um, so stay tuned on the answer to that. Okay, and what was the other question? I have no idea, no. have a clear something. No. Okay, that's it. Yeah, I have a question. I'm new to this, so I'm, I'm, I'm going out and I'm trying to stay in between the two buoys. The yep. green and the red. And sometimes, like, the next set of buoys are a long ways away. And if you're in open waters and you go to the right, you miss the buoys. So how do you see, how do you use the Garmin to show you where the next set of buoys are? Zoom out. That's it, huh? Okay. Yep. Zoom out and you'll see them. Um, you can also use your cursors to pan ahead. So you have two options. 
That's a very good point. So yeah. one, it, and that's completely personal preference. So for example, when I am cruising with my husband, he likes to have the screen zoomed in really close. So you see what's right around you. I like to have the screen zoomed out so I can see my next couple sets of markers. Right. So I know where I'm going. So yeah, because, that because is, I ended up um, in waters that was like shallow and yeah. I was in the middle. Uh, it doesn't yeah. make sense. I'm thinking that the middle is going to be deeper. Yeah, right. not always. No, well, I guess. No, I so just zoom out a little bit and you should have a different perspective on that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we have one question. Is that sport fisherman in the club? Jonathan, what did you mean by that? The picture in the upper left hand corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, al I already answered that. The answer is not yet. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> Leanne, Brian of Berman has a question. Okay, where are you, Brian? Here I am. You got me. <laughs> Go ahead, ask the question. I can't find it. Now, it's more of a comment than a question. I just wanted to say to Bev that I like the tracks and I'm a new boater, so I rely on them to sort of learn some of the waterways that like when we go even like back towards the rivers, they're not really that well marked with the markers. So I rely on seeing where boats go. And for the most part, it's been pretty good. So I would not like to get on a boat where that has been gone. I know if it gets so many marks, so many tracks on it, you can't really figure it out. And then of course it should be clear, but I would hate for I me, mean, I would not want to get on a boat where there weren't tracks because I rely on them to learn the waterways. I just wanted to make that comment. Okay. Thanks, Brian. I will keep that in Thanks. mind. We'll keep that in mind. Also, one more time, Amanda, can you go over another question? Did she talk about the glare from the sun? Can you do that one more time? Yep. So there's a couple options. Uh, one, you can change the backlight. Make sure you're not on night mode instead of day mode in the daytime. You can turn the uh, brightness up and that's pretty much your options there. Okay. Uh, on, on the echo maps, those are pretty much your options. Okay. Does anybody else have any other questions? Uh, it's like... Can I ask a oh, question about the sonar display? Sure. Yes. I, I, I've never understood whether right left on the display is right left on the boat or forward and back or what exactly it means. The only thing okay. I've been able to understand is the depth. Okay, okay. Good question, we will answer that. And then I did see another question, um, Jacob Lapids. I saw, yep, I see, I see your question, so we'll get, we'll get to you. Um, okay, so let's answer the sonar question. Let me see if I can minimize this, I can find my, go back to that screen. Okay, so we are on the sonar screen, right here, right up against this, um, I'm, at a loss for words right now. The scale on the right hand side, this is directly behind your boat. So when you see an item show up on this screen, you've already passed over it. So when this screen is actually going on, it's moving right to left. So this cluster of fish right here is right behind your boat. This cluster of fish is already passed you've already passed and gone over that oh so you're like moving from left to right you're moving on on this this screen moves right to left okay so directly behind the boat right where your transducer is and again i'm taking a guess here that most of your transducers are on the transom on the back so that this is right where your transducer is. So this cluster of fish would be right behind the boat. Yeah. Also, question. Can I answer your question? Yes, um, very much, thank you. 
Okay, good. We do have a question about some of the charts and the question is, what are the blue lines on the charts for? Okay, let's look at, let's pull up a chart. Blue lines, uh, is this a blue line that you're referring to where my cursor is? Yes. Okay, that is a contour line. So that shows um, a drop or a change in depth. So if you see my cursor here, I'm gonna trace this one here. You see we've got a 41 foot depth over here and then a 27 foot depth over here. And if you follow that line, you've got here and 21 here and you can kind of see where the lines get close together. You're, you've got a little bit of a, uh, a peak there so you get pretty shallow. So they're just called contour lines. Okay. And now a woman after my own heart, how to get tied information ahead of time so that we can uh, plan our journey, our route. Okay, so if you have access to the boat ahead of time, so if you can go to the boat the, ne the day before you go out on your tide screen, you have next day. You can go, you can hit this next day button. Whoops, 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 whoops. You can hit this next day button seven times to get the next week. So if you are, if you're on the boat on Sunday and you know you're going to go back out on the next Saturday, you can hit next day and you can watch the date change so you can find the date that you want to and you can see your tides. You can also Google tides. I Google tides frequently because I'm not on the boat at my chart plotter. So you can Google tides. Yep. Yeah. On the questions, the, um, I'm sorry if I'm completely butchering the last name, but the Jacob Lapids, did we get your question answered? No, thank you for paying attention. <laughs> So a couple of weeks ago when I was boating the uh, Garmin combo charts. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, was up and on okay. and then it stopped in let's just say 20 seconds. And so I turned the machine off and I t turned it on again and I got it set up for combo screens and I started out found my depth and then it turned off again. Was that an electrical connection or? Okay, uh, so we're talking about depth. So your depth, your depth stopped. Yes. And was it flashing? Nope, went blank. Just went blank, okay. Mm -hmm. When it went off, um, were you running, were you cruising on plane? Were you? No, I was going slow and just okay. watching low water coming into the canal in Lewis downtown. Okay. Slow, slow moving, paying attention, you know. Okay. That could be a number of things. It could be, and this was a question that was asked before the uh, webinar actually, and there's, there's not one direct easy answer. One, it could be the transducer itself, Mm -hmm. The transducer itself could be bad, so it's not transmitting. Mm -hmm. um, it could be a lot of times what happens is when people get up on plane and they're running fast and they're running maybe 20, 23, 25 knots, they lose depth and it flashes. And that's the transducer and the power that the transducer is outputting isn't capable of handling the turbulence under the so that can cause it too. So there's a number of different number of reasons that can cause that. It's it's not one simple, easy answer. And that would have to be something where somebody on the Freedom Boat Club part would have to take a deeper look at that particular boat to see okay. what happens. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, here's another question. Can you zoom in after panning? Yes. Yep, you All can right. in and out while panning. Yep. Great. Great. All right, if anybody 
has any other topics that you'd like to talk about or would like to have Amanda back for, uh, let me know. Um, or you can email me or, um, or Bev, uh, but it usually is, uh, is me. Um, let's see, from Pat Powell to everyone on tide charts, uh, what are the bottom numbers on a tide chart, i.e. 12, 4, 8, 12? That's your time, time of day. Time of day. Yep. So you can see here where each little dotted line right here represents an hour. So every six hours we have a tide change. Ah. So whether it's a low tide or a high tide. So about every six hours we have a tide change. So you can see these crosshairs. And if you follow this one all the way down, we're a little bit past the eight, but we're not quite to the nine o'clock line. So it's 827. So this is just time along the bottom. Great. Okay, Amanda, thank you. Thank you so much for agreeing to uh, present this information to us. This is absolutely, this is amazing. Every single person can use this, uh, the equipment's on all our boats. Um, and what I'll do is when I get all the, um, the link from Zoom, I'll distribute that. Um, and then uh, when I get any comments back from you guys, the next uh, presentation, um, we'll make sure that we promote and get that out. And um, definitely we're going to do a presentation on Navionics, which is amazing because I just started pressing buttons the other day and I didn't know it did that. So um, also you can't, if you're on Garmin and you're going through all the screens, you can't change any information, right? You just keep going back. And then if you get too wrapped up or too lost, you hit home and you try it all over again. Yep. But the only way you learn how to use this equipment is using it. Right. You're not, you can't hurt the machines. Unless you take a hammer to it, you really can't hurt the machines. So I do encourage you to press buttons, look at your menus, see what it does. And then, you know, at the very end, at the very least, we restore factory defaults and it's a brand new machine. So thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. And Amanda, again, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're thank welcome. You. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Thank thanks, Amanda. Yeah, thanks, and guys. And and thanks, Leanne, for thank getting this thanks, all Leanne. set up so for us. You're welcome. My pleasure. Let's do it again. Yeah. Absolutely. Nice job. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Appreciate Amanda. It. You're welcome. I'm going to stop.